All right, with the standard model, uh, what we need to realize or hopefully understand is that the standard model is a system that's been designed to predict and model what we've discovered so far using particle accelerators. So it's not something that's um, you know meant to be sort of super complex, even though it does deal with things called quarks and leptons and mesons and baryons. What it's doing is giving people at CERN, so where the Large Hadron Collider is, an opportunity to look for um, a needle in a haystack, but at least they know roughly where in the haystack they're looking. <clears throat> so to start with, there's two types of fundamental particles. We have quarks and we have leptons. Uh, each of these types of particles has six in it. So there's six quarks listed here and there's six different leptons listed here. So the electron is its own fundamental particle, but a proton or a neutron is made up of a combination of up and down quarks. So all of these particles have their own antiparticles as well. And this is just an observation um, that has been made. Uh, and I guess it helps flesh out the standard model a little bit and helps predict what can and can't be created or exist um, so that scientists spend a little more time looking where they should and not where they shouldn't. <clears throat> so if we have combinations of quarks and leptons, we have a combination of these different types of particles. So for instance, three quarks is considered a baryon and an up, up and down quark is a baryon. So it's three quarks and specifically that's a proton. If we had an up quark and two down quarks, we would end up with a neutron. If we have any sort of quark and an anti-quark, so it could be an up and an anti-top, or a strange and an anti-charm, for instance, those are called mesons. Any quark, any anti-quark. So an up and an anti-down is a pion. So the up, top, and strange quarks, they have a charge of plus two-thirds. The down, bottom, and charm quarks have a charge of minus one-third. <coughs> They're fractionally charged because that helps fit the standard model. Um, the charges of these baryons and mesons can be found by adding the charges of the particles that make them up. So in this case here, an up and an anti-down. So, an anti, so a down quark is minus a third, so an anti-down uh, anti is plus a third, so two-thirds plus a third is one, so this pion must have a charge of plus one. Two thirds plus two thirds take a third is uh, four thirds take a third, three thirds, so that's one. That's why a proton is positively charged, so a charge of plus one. <coughs> um, the quarks come in flavors, so these six flavors are listed here below up, down, charm, strange, top, and bottom, and the quarks and the leptons with these. Um, weird flavors and whatnot they are what make up absolutely everything so if you've got a proton sliced into it you would find quarks if you've got a neutron sliced into it you'd find quarks you can't slice in an electron it's its own um, fundamental particle to start with so <clears throat> now we need to start following the rules that the standard model puts in place so all baryons have a baryon number of one all leptons have a lepton number of one, and all the antiparticles of those leptons have a lepton number of minus one. So for instance, a muon is a lepton, so it's got a lepton number of plus one. It's charge, negative one, but it's got a lepton number of plus one. An anti-muon would have a charge of plus one and a lepton number of minus one. Uh, a tau neutrino has a lepton number of one, charge of zero, an anti-tau neutrino would have a lepton number of minus one and also a charge of zero. <clears throat> so if we go into um, balancing these reactions, we have neutron decaying into a proton plus an electron plus an anti-neutrino. If we add up the baryon numbers, one, because that's got three quarks in it, three quarks in it, no quarks in it, no quarks in it. So one, so everything on the left-hand side of this line should equal everything on the right-hand side. So that balances. So it fits the sand model. If we look at charge, no charge, plus one, take one, uh, and no charge. So we end up with zero charge. Zero, so this is for the lepton numbers. So it's not a lepton, so it's lepton number zero. Similar, uh, this is the normal electron, lepton number of plus one. This is the 
anti-electron neutrino, so it's got a lepton number of minus one. So also that balances. Then we go on to things called the gauge bosons. These are the particles that are false mediators. So they're the particles that are um, shared or exchanged between the strong nuclear, weak nuclear and electromagnetic forces to determine how big and how far those forces can act. So with the electromagnetic force, we get the photon. For the strong nuclear, the gluon, the weak nuclear, we have the W and Z bosons. Um, <clears throat> when we get particle accelerators like the LHC, we get particles moving very, very close to the speed of light. So uh, gamma is large, so the Lorentz factor is large. So then we've basically got this relativistic mass thing going on. So we get a couple of protons and their relativistic masses, though, are huge. So these relativistic masses can uh, become the larger of the quarks. So if we go back up here, the larger of the quarks, if you look at this guy here, this top quark, um, actually has a mass of about 180 something or other times more than a single proton. So that is uh, obviously pretty massive. So it's the mass of the top quark, approximately that of an atom of gold, which is utterly bonkers. Uh, this mass energy equivalent, so make them go faster, they've got more energy, therefore effectively more mass is due to Einstein's, or not due to, it is a thing, and Einstein's e equals mc squared helps explain it. <clears throat> um, but that's all only dealing with the energy. We also need to worry about the momentum. So when we get these two particles combining their pure energy, sorry, their mass turns in pure energy, and we end up with photons that go in opposite directions because photons have momentum, weirdly enough. And these photons go in opposite directions. So we get a particle and an antiparticle. They will annihilate each other, and they'll turn into photons. Um, same energy, so same uh, momentum photons, and they'll go off in opposite directions. So, <clears throat> how to do these things? Identify what's going on. So, identify the properties that are involved. Um, are those properties conserved? Yes or no, they should be. Uh, so, if you're given a reaction and you have to fill in the blanks, just assume it's conserved, it will be a real one. Um, or, does this, uh, is this reaction possible? Um, go through the baryon numbers, the charge, the lepton numbers, so the individual electronic lepton, the muonic lepton numbers, and the tau lepton numbers, and find out whether they balance. Uh, you'll be able to fill in the, the missing jigsaw puzzle pieces based on the information that you've got in front of you.